Hi, I'm John Stewart, and welcome to another episode of Cello Chat. Today we're going to talk about what I call sound production. These are the various elements that we use to create a sound on the cello. Okay, there are three things to determine the kind of sound that you'll be making on a cello. The first thing is how much weight will you put into the string? Will you be very heavy? Will you be very light? It's kind of the difference between, say, petting a kitty cat, which will you be very light with, and petting a big old dog, which you'll be heavier with, right? So weight is the first, what we'll call variable, and, and, and uh, the, variable in, in uh, creating a sound on the cello. Uh, the second variable is the speed of the bow. Are you going to play with a really fast bow and use a lot of bow? Or are you going to play with a very slow bow? Right. So bow speed is the second variable. Now the third variable is where you put the bow on the string. Are you going to put it here over the fingerboard? Or are you going to put the bow down here near the bridge? Now, I like to think of this as what I call it contact point. And I like to think of this in terms of channel. So if I put the bow here over the, the fingerboard, I call that channel one. And then about the halfway between the, fing the, uh, the uh, fingerboard and the bridge, I call this channel two, about here. Channel three, channel four, channel five, channel six, channel seven, and channel eight. Notice that the channels get smaller as you get near the, um, the bridge. And we'll talk, there's a reason for that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about these three things is that one affects the other, okay? Now, this is what I mean. So, if we put our bow in channel one, which is over the fingerboard, then we're going to play with a fast, light bow, and we're going to achieve kind of a broad, fluffy sound like this. It's very warm. It's very broad. Now, on the other side of the coin, if we play very near the bridge, then we're going to play with a slow, heavy bow. And you're going to get a much more penetrating, slender sound. This is the sound that projects to the back of the hall. And listen to this sound. So it's very interesting that contact point uh, affects the other two variables, right? So one affects the other. Now, one really, really good exercise for the development of tone, tone production, is what I call the Adabeat exercise. So what I do is I get a metronome, which is a timekeeping device, and I set it on 60. If you don't have a metronome, you can, you can uh, use the uh, seconds on a clock hand, and that would help. So let's see. One, two, three, four. Let's just say this is seconds for right now. It's pretty close, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bow in channel one, and I'm going to pull one beat per bow. One, 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 one. Now, I want to make sure I'm using the whole bow and that it's very even all the way through and that I'm getting a nice, a nice consistent sound all the way through the bow. And then when I feel comfortable with that, then I'm going to move down to channel two, which is about the halfway point between the, the, the fingerboard and the frog. And now I'm going to do two beats per bow. And that means the bow is traveling a little, a little bit slower. I'm going to put a little bit more weight into the string. One, two, one, two, one, two. Right. Now, the next step would be three. So I'm going to move down to about right here. And I'm going to play three beats per bow. So the bow is traveling even slower. And I'm adding even more, a little bit more weight to it. One, two. exercise is to go from one beat to about eight beats, right, to about eight beats. And that way you can really learn uh, t how to manipulate the sound and change the character of the sound. And, and also, uh, the, the, the other benefit to doing this exercise is you become really acutely aware of, if you put the bow here, exactly how much weight that you need to use, okay? You want to do that on all the strings. You want to do that on all the strings. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to talk about this is that sometimes when you're playing, especially on your C string, which is a very, it's the thickest of the string, and you're playing near the bridge, sometimes the string won't activate immediately. So you're like, so I have a little trick. I'll, I'll, I'll clue you into this. 
is that I start from above like this, and then notice how I pluck the string a millisecond before the bow reaches the string watch. By doing this, I always achieve clean starts on the C string. Now, I only do this in the very beginning. Once the bow is going, you don't need to do this, right? So, if you do this for 10 minutes each day, you'll develop a really beautiful sound, okay? Now, last thing I want to say about this is that when someone says to you, wow, you have a really beautiful sound on the cello, I believe what they're really talking about is you have a complex sound that's rich in overtones. So think of it like a bell. If you hear like a beautiful bell ringing, this bell doesn't only have the primary tone to it, it has what's called secondary tones too. So when you're playing the cello, you really want to pull out of the sound of the cello all those other sounds, all those other overtones. So let's, let, like for example, let's play this open G. Now of course we hear this note, which is the primary, but also we can hear this note if we really listen very carefully. Right? I, I don't know if this little mic is going to pick this all up, you know, but uh, I, I think you might have the idea here. So as you're doing your longbow exercises, listen for these overtones because that's what really gives that's what that's what people it's it's a complex i mean i'll use the analogy of wine you know when you when you drink a glass of wine you know there's a lot of elements that you're you, you know is it, it they'll, they'll use adjectives like it's light but yet it's bold it's fruity it's complex it's a complex flavor so you want those that sense of of a complex sound in your cello playing as well and it gives it a, a certain dimension that people enjoy listening to well i hope this has been informative and uh, thank you very much for your time